Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So the big story of uh, the day, or actually the evening, is um, Nancy Pelosi has officially, right, I'm reading this right off my phone, uh, has officially announced impeachment inquiry into uh, Donald Trump. Now, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, if you're a supporter of Trump, uh, if you love Trump, or you hate Trump, uh, again, it, it, that's all fine and dandy on the surface. I, I think from the trading point of view, and again, when this announcement came, um, the futures are pretty much doing nothing. They're pretty flat. Uh, they're pretty flat um, after this announcement, which was ironic because today's sell-off okay, was blamed by the possible announcement of the peach of, of the impeachment uh, announcement by closing. So it's very, very ironic. I, I think the biggest, more important story of today is technically, okay? And this is kind of where I want to start out. So we talked about this area here. We talked about this whole range on the NASDAQ 100, okay, the QQQs. And we said, we have to assume the market is good, okay? Or at least the bullish stance is valid until it goes back to this range. And if it closes below, uh, that 189 60s level, then we got a problem. At least the bulls have a problem. And that's what happened today. Okay. That's exactly what happened today. But if this was an individual event, okay, um, if this was a one day thing and stock prices were very, very strong and all the groups are fine and dandy, I would have had a little bit more, I would have given the bulls going into tomorrow a little bit more rope. Okay. Because you want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. The problem was we started seeing the really aggressive selling in beta now since last Thursday. You guys remember that? Since last Thursday, just really, really aggressive days. And when you look at the stock prices and you look at, you know, the Alibabas, right? The Alibabas of the worlds and the videos of the worlds and the Baidus of the world. Again, stocks that are, again, affected by China. Okay. Really, really destructive moves. When you look at stocks that have nothing to do with China, right? But just overall high flyers like the Amazon, we'll talk about that for tomorrow, the Facebooks of the world, um, the Apples of the world, the Teslas of the world, right? Teslas and Netflix and Roku. Again, this is a not even an isolated situation anymore. This is called the beta problem. Not for us, but this is called a beta problem if you are an investor. And I, I think the biggest misconception is the market needs a reason to sell, right? Like, again, we're in going into the fourth quarter. And I think Kyler posted a, an older video that I did, I think, two, three months ago about how everybody's expecting this magnificent run, right? Magnificent run uh, into the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, the turkey rally, the Santa Claus rally, the January effect, blah, blah. Okay, nothing has to happen. Okay, nothing has to happen in trading. This is why it's trading. It's very, you're trying to make mental, you know, you're trying to grasp mentally about the most improbable, you know, improbable events. And sometimes you get a lot of improbable events. And, you know, when you're looking at, when you're looking at today's day, right? And, and again, I knew going into today, like I, I said this last night in the video, like I thought we were going to have an up session, but I also said I didn't believe that we were going to get a lot of value to the upside because if you look at the channels from last night and you look at the channels this morning, like we gapped up this morning. I'm like, okay, it's playing out kind of how I'm, you know, I'm thinking. Now the question is, are these things going to confirm? And I thought it was going to take a couple of days for all these stocks to get into the channels. And none of that happened, okay? None of that happened. And we saw another really, really aggressive day of selling. Uh, again, they're really taking apart any high flyer, okay? Any high flyer that was doing well in the first part of the year, they're not only taking away gains, they're taking away gains for the whole year. So if you look at, for example, Netflix, okay? It was one of the biggest movers, man. Really, really one of the biggest movers uh, in April, you know, we were having this conversation at $400 a share, price targets all over the place, 400, 
420 calls. And now we're having this conversation yesterday about $7 million worth of the October 265 puts, right? 265, right? 265 puts yesterday. $7 million. Again, repeat it after me. Like I said, they were not uncertain. The stock went all the way down to the 252 area. Uh, Roku, again, just when you think, well, maybe sellers gassed out a little bit. Maybe it's time to, you know, wait to see if it balances out, if it starts, you know, sucking in more. They got killed again. They absolutely got killed today. And again, when you start putting fuel on the fire, again, stocks that, again, were strong, not strong no more. Again, why did Tesla go down 18? Okay, do you think some 12 tier firm downgraded them yesterday makes a difference? No, this is the rotation. This is the, the this is the port, a part of the market that we say that these beta names all trade in a tribe. And until they change, until sellers really get gassed out, you kind of keep going with the flow. And if you look at today's activity, and I, I screwed up twice. The funny thing is I sh I bought Netflix three times today, okay? Two times I, bro I bought it like a schmuck. The third time I bought it Technically, can you guess which, which time I made money in, right? Don't trade like a schmuck. Don't trade like a schmuck. But again, it really did show you how sellers did not dry up, okay? And obviously, when the sell-off came, Tesla definitely bailed me out, okay? Tesla definitely bailed me out. Uh, I made back my money on Tesla, and I made a little bit of money on Netflix on my actual third time in the trade, technically, to make a move on a remount. Uh, but again, very, very aggressive action going to the downside, Going into tomorrow, again, if you are flat like I am, I am hoping for a gap up. If you are a technical, you know, if you're a technical trader, okay, and you have positions, this is the day, uh, this is the overnight to be, to, you know, to be short. Because again, if you believe in the theory that stocks go from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here's the next demand here in the 150, uh, 186, and then the next demand uh, in the 184, and that's what we call uh, measured potential. Uh, if you look at the pivots, they very aggressive. Okay, very very aggressive. The only pivot to the upside was an eighteen dollars stock we talked about last night. Uh, we put this in the Twitter feed today. Exploded again, which basically again confirms the notion that nobody needs to be in these trades with you. The key is again trade where you feel comfortable. A pivot is a pivot is a pivot. It doesn't make a difference if it's Tesla, if it's Dova, if it's Sirius Satellite Radio. Right, it's still either going to go or it's not going to go. So if you look at uh, if you look at today's session, and again, I, I, you know, I was the first one to admit it. I really thought, uh, I really thought based on, I really thought based on how I saw the stocks base out yesterday, sellers I thought dried up. I mean, the first thing, well, again, here's here's kind of my my notes for the day, and I said only issue with today is beta still needs to confirm 60 minute channels that we talked about a couple minutes ago. I think it might take an extra day or so. They have a lot of work to do for a bigger potential. Again, none of that happened, of course, again, but at least we were understanding that it wasn't going to happen today. Although some good setups away would not be shocked if we had a tighter day. Let's see how it plays out. And I, and I was referring to the upside. It never happened. So we started looking back to the downside. And even again, pre-market, I was saying, hey, look, watch Netflix. Uh, the washout red to green. The first red to green move is always a head fake. Watch the second uh, red to green move that obviously never happened. And again, we just started going down the line. Again, congratulations for all you guys who were long uh, beyond coming into today's day. Again, these are the levels. 46 confirmed, 42 confirmed, went down as low as like 39 and change. I have to assume unless a miracle of the meatless gods come tomorrow, this thing will test the 136 level. Okay, I have to assume that. Uh, again, this area never built. Again, I was looking for the upward bias that never came. This never built. Roku obviously never built. Netflix obviously never built. So again, we had to wait for our spots. And then little by little, right, little by little, things got pretty aggressive. First and foremost, congratulations for all you guys who did buy uh, Dova 1830 needs to build. And again, this is kind of basic uh, technical analysis uh, broke above the 1830 level, went to almost 20. I mean, really, really big move. Again, if you're following the stock, and I'm not going to be following it tomorrow, but if you are following the stock, you, you, now it needs uh, build and confirmation above today's high of roughly 20. So if you're still in that, uh, great job there. Uh, ZS obviously never, never, never built. And here's where, you know, here's where I started the day. I started the day in the red. I jumped the gun, okay? I jumped the gun. So I wrote experienced traders only. If Netflix traps in the bottom of this channel, I wrote 61, 62, can squeeze back up. So this is, this is what happened. So it went below, right? It went below 61 and then it snapped back. I think, yeah, it snapped back. So, no, no, excuse me. I apologize. 
my first entry was 62, okay, 62, because I really, really thought this was yesterday low. I thought they were going to trap at the bottom channel. So I got long at 62, didn't work out, sold it for a loss. So where I jumped the gun was it started building back above 61. So I got long. I never waited for a confirmation, lost money again. So even though I didn't have a lot of size, okay, it added up. It really did, especially again, you know, I don't trade small. Uh, these wasn't the biggest positions, but it added up. So I started the day in a pretty, pretty crappy way. And then da, 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 again, I always say this all the time. You never want to, you never want to um, lose your focus. You never want to lose your patience. You never want to revenge trade. You never want to trade, deviate outside of the process. So I waited, I waited, I waited. 238 held three times. If it builds below, it can flush. My man is Seif, best stock ever. Can you guess what he's talking about? Da, 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 da. And this is where I got everything back. Okay, uh, this is where I got everything back. The 238 level, if you guys remember, were from a couple of days ago, right? The 238 was right over here, right? So if you look what happened, this thing just got destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed. I know a lot of you guys caught a much bigger move than I did, but hey, it is what it is. I got back my uh, Netflix losses. And then the funny thing is I went into Netflix the third time, right? The third time I went in, where the hell did I go in? I went in 61, I think it was 61, where the hell? Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. So I, I went in again above the 6130s level and I sold, I sold my highest print. I think I sold for a dollar and change. Uh, so I did okay. I did okay. I got back some, some of my early losses in Netflix. So again, it, it turned out well, knock on wood, obviously again, use break even as a stop, uh, for the balance and it worked out fine. But the, the, the problem was, again, the problem was I jumped the gun a little bit too early on Netflix in my first two times. The first one, okay. I, I screwed up the second time I went in for the FOMO. Again, I'm a human being. It does make happen. But again, uh, the way I got it back was uh, technical areas. Uh, again, BYND, just, just death, just absolute complete death. Uh, here is the 46, excuse me, here is the 46 area we talked about right here. 46 area, took out the 43, took out the 41, took out the 40, went all the way down uh, to the, the 239. I think tomorrow, 239, 139, we'll test the 136. And again, we started talking about this for the last couple of days that, uh, you know, the stock couldn't go up and upgrade, stock couldn't go up anymore and PRs, again, whatever doesn't go up, must go down. So BYND guys, let's start off the watch list for tomorrow, uh, BYND. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.